Hey everyone, it's Dr. Rick. The tutorial for today is about aromatherapy. And I, uh, one of the first videos I ever did was an ultrasonic nebulizer and how to use it. And it's way old, but I'll try to put a link down below. And uh, it's an old ultrasonic nebulizer, my first one in the video. And uh, nowadays you can find them everywhere. And for about 30 to 40 bucks, this thing was a gift uh, to my wife from someone. So I'm not sure who gave it to her, but it's pretty nice actually. It gives a nice color, and uh, the way these things work, it also actually gives sound. So let me just turn it on real quick. Probably should put water in it. So this is the way this thing works, is you use water to sit on top of a vibrating plate. The vibrating plate, I'm going to use lavender in this case, the vibrating plate will move the water molecules to the point of um, essentially vaporizing them. And when you vaporize water molecules, they're supposed to come out and uh, I, I guess fill the area around. I'm not sure if you can see that. You can see some of the smoke, the steam coming out. So uh, when the water vaporizes out, it carries with it the oil in microscopic particles and when the oil water mixture gets into the room it gives a scent obviously because this is oil and each oil comes from a plant and each plant is a different scent but it also is supposed to induce a feeling depending on the plant certain plants are stimulating like uh, peppermint or eucalyptus that's why you use it when you're having an asthma attack or stuffy nose uh, those of you who have grandmas who just used to use Vicks and stick it in your nose or use Vicks on the forehead if there's a headache or use Vicks on the body part, that's what my grandma used to use. Uh, I mean, they kind of got it right, but uh, it, it is a common sensation that when you have uh, an oil or a plant-based oil applied to a certain part of the body through the skin, that you will have the beneficial effects of that plant and the phytosterols in that plant affect the muscle, the tissue, the, the, the skin itself underneath. So th there are some people who don't uh, buy into that and uh, you know the arguments that you have to have data to see if it's worthy to use this, you know, I, I agree with the use of data, that's how we kind of figure things out, but if you don't have a downside to the application of an essential oil, I don't think you have to spend a million bucks to say that, well, why not give it a try? So a lot of my fibromyalgia sufferers will try to uh, relax with a massage or go to a massage therapist. And in some cases, when you go to a massage therapist and the massage therapist uses essential oils, the experience is enhanced. There's something different about when you use the olfactory sense to also trigger the brain to relax. That's what it does. I had um, my first exposure to this was in the Claremont Herb Shop with uh, Jen. Jen runs a company called Jen Sense. I'll, I'll also put a, a link down below. And uh, she used to be able to blend uh, different oils, different carriers, depending on the patient, and put together a blend in the bottle, in a roll on, or in a spray, and have that person benefit depending on the imbalance from benefit from the spray or the application or just having the aromatherapy. Now, that's the way uh, Chinese medicine works. That's the way yoga works or Ayurvedic medicine. It depends on, or we look at imbalance. In America, we look at fatigue, we look at anxiety, look at depression, and we try to treat that. But the old, the ancient uh, healing traditions look at balance. Are you moving? Are you interacting? Are you eating properly? Are you, are you sleeping deeply? And when you're not, sometimes we use these things to facilitate the return to balance. So these are a couple of the ones I started out with. I started out with Nature Sunshine Deep Rub. I, I have fibromyalgia trigger points, so I used this. One, this is one of my first ones. I used this for the trigger points, and it worked well. I'm out of it, but uh, I now have come up and found my own preferences. Uh, Acacia is, you'll find that everywhere. Sometimes in Whole Foods, sometimes in Fruitful Yield up in Illinois. 
Uh, I've actually seen some uh, places like Jewel Osco carry their own brand, uh, and it's you get what you pay for, and uh, it's not bad. But uh, I use cheaper brands for diffusing in the office. For myself, I use more expensive brands. Uh, now Foods has their own brand. I like them. Uh, pretty decent. Uh, this is lavender. Lavender typically calms. Uh, now, I did have someone that was super sensitive. Uh, hypersensitivity syndrome is actually a syndrome. And uh, we had to, when we find that patients are coming like that to the office, we'll turn off the aromatherapy. But for the most part, we try to get this pervasive throughout the uh, office and have people kind of heal up even before they get into the room. So you can smell this stuff outside. If I had my uh, options, I'd actually burn incense, but it sometimes affects the other doctors close by, so I don't do it that often. Uh, incense I learned at the Chopra Center can also um, enhance the meditative practice if the right incense is used. So it's the same concept. If you can stimulate the olfactory nerve, the the, the the smell nerves in the nose, that's a direct connection to the brain and you can induce a feeling. If those of you who watch the movie Ratatouille, uh, there was a rat who used to be able to cook and he prepared um, the dish Ratatouille for this critique, this uh, uh, food critique. And it was great because the scene where the food critique bit his first, they took his first bite from the Ratatouille dish the sense, his senses took him back to childhood when he injured himself and his mom calmed down the injury and gave him ratatouille and it made him feel good. And that's what essential oil is supposed to do. It's supposed to give you a sense of calm. Now whether you have an, a, an effect where you remember uh, when you were riding or, uh, uh, running in fields of lavender or whether you remember your first date, a prom date, that doesn't matter. The idea is it's supposed to still give you uh, a, an emotional change. Certainly better than just being stressed out all day. And again, because the downside is so low, why not? You can even do this in your car. In fact, if you go to a, that new car smell, I think that it's actually patented so some used car dealers will spray the new car smell spray in their vehicles to make people that are trying to decide on buying think that it's a new vehicle. There's also a, a, a thinking in real estate that when you bake a loaf of bread in a house, as soon as somebody opens up the house or goes into the house, that they smell the bread or a hint of it, they'll think this is home because it induces a sense of this is home. So um, those are things to keep in mind. Again, aromatherapy, if you do this on a regular basis, it makes you feel good. If you surround yourself with aroma, that and there's different types of aroma you can probably find about 20 different uh, essential oils if you go to your local shop uh, Jen sends I believe she sends them out to you if you just know what you would like to pick from her and it comes in a dabber this is my favorite pan away by young living I found has got me to accomplish two marathons I actually put it in I couldn't carry this when I was running so I put it in a ziploc bag and uh, by the time I think I hit 13 miles, I was actually licking the bag because I was trying to get the most essence. And that's a, that's a cool thing about essential oil. Because it's derived from plant, you should be able to ingest it. And uh, this, is a, this is a dabber. So you can, you, so that it won't all pour out. You can put a little bit on and it'll give you a little bit of, uh, you can probably see that reflection, uh, a little bit of oil that you can spread and either you can just get the essence of the oil, now I'm feeling cool. Or you can apply it to your trigger points, which is what I usually do when I finish a tough workout or when I feel my fibromyalgia kicking up again. So what I uh, will tell my patients is at night, if I'm trying to establish a night ritual, when I do my four, seven, eight breath or my guided imagery and I do the calming ritual at night, I will sometimes dab, two dabs of sandalwood on each side of my pillow as I lay myself down and I'll calm down that way because it'll give me the continued scent of sandalwood without disturbing my partner. So sometimes the, the aromas that you like will affect negatively other people around you so you have to be careful. I have to be careful when I do this on a plane because if I am traveling for a long distance and I dab because I'm having 
I have this on my trigger point because I'm having a trigger point spasm start up. Uh, it might, it'll affect me great, but it might uh, set off somebody else. So you have to really be careful. Now, if I'm suffering, I don't care about it, my, anybody else. I'm just going to use it. So hoping that everybody else will get benefit from it. So you can uh, diffuse it in your ultrasonic nebulizer. You can actually throw it in, in the baseboard or in the base of the shower, turn on the shower, turn on hot, and have the steam of the shower pick it up. That's what I sometimes do with uh, people who have upper respiratory tract infections so that they can get the humidity of deep breathing that and eucalyptus in as they are resolving their infection. You can apply it. You can have somebody else apply it. Um, so there's many different things. I, I actually suggested to a patient that if you have a problem with the nose, before you neti putt, you might want to put a very tiny drop of essential oil, depending on what you like, into the neti pot with the bottled water and try to use that to irrigate the nose and then have this constant sensation or smell of whatever you like all day long. So th these are the uh, ways that we get um, uh, a plant. Another way to get a plant and the plant's greatest protective forces into ourselves to assimilate the same protection. And it's always a matter of um, knowing how much you spend. I wouldn't spend too much money. Panaway is kind of expensive, but I found it's the only one that really helps my trigger points. You can go cheap end. Uh, I think lavender, for the most part, you can get from anybody. Uh, Helichrysium or sandalwood are higher end, and you'll find you'll spend a little bit of money. So sometimes if you get just a little bit of those two, Helichrysium for inflammation or sandalwood for relaxation, and you put a little bit of high quality into a carrier oil. Carrier oil is a generic oil. It'll make it extend the life and maybe uh, decrease the price that you have to pay. But uh, So th this is how we use it. Hopefully this gives you a little bit of an idea. If you have your own preferences for essential oils, your brands, or uh, your favorites, I'd like to hear if you can put them out in the comments down below.